On today's show, Bandcamp or Spotify, where should you focus your marketing efforts? Welcome to 30 Minute Music Marketing. 30 Minute Music Marketing, for musicians who want to get better at marketing their music. Hi, I'm Greg. Hello, I'm Sheldon, and this is 30 Minute Music Marketing, the show for DIY artists and independent musicians who want to get better at marketing their music, no matter what state the world is in. Mm. We sold you on, Greg, we sold you on. It is. Uh, it is. I've come to realise this is the most expensive holiday I've never been on. It, it, it is true, though. It is true. Uh, the, the two holidays that I was about to go on have, have already been cancelled. But let's not concentrate about that. Let's concentrate on one of the, shall we say, um, unexpected bonuses of the lockdown. And this specifically relates to Bandcamp, because okay. during the lockdown, uh, I'm sure yourself and, and many people out there will have noticed that for one day a month, I think it might be the first day of the month, they are reducing, nay, uh, they've scrapped their Bandcamp fees for anyone who buys anything through an artist store on that day. So um, if I was to sell a digital download or even a piece of merchandise, I think normally, I think their commission's 10% for digital and 15% for if you, if you buy a, a physical product right. for, from somebody's store. But for one day a month, they uh, they scrap that and artists have, have noticed, uh, you know, obviously major upsells during that particular period. And if, if you go on Twitter, you can see pretty much everybody, uh, you know, potentially selling uh, lots of stuff. And I happen to notice a, uh, a particular artist who'd been retweeted, I think, by someone that I follow. And that particular artist said, oh, I've made more money on Bandcamp today than I have since I've ever been on Spotify. And that sort of got me thinking and has potentially reignited the whole debate between maybe uh, not using streaming services such as Spotify and, and all the others that may be out there and exclusively selling and selling alone through Bandcamp. Is that is that a sensible thing to do? Can, can you possibly run the two things in tandem? That's potentially in our deep dive today, Greg, okay. what we're going to discuss. Wouldn't it be great if PayPal did the same, though? One day of the month, they were, they did, they let their PayPal fees go. Oh, and even nice. eBay, especially at the moment. Well, the, yeah, they do have eBay do have nicer days for their sellers, but uh, yes, PayPal are ruthless. Um, but uh, okay, let's start at the beginning. Let, let's be quite holistic. Let's try and take a step back and look at the the whole streaming uh, world, as it were, because. Uh, streaming is now generating more money for the recorded music industry than has been generated for quite some time. I, I think the industry as a whole makes more money now than it probably has done over the past mm. at least a decade. 80% of revenues now come from streaming. So the majors are making streaming work. Large indies, and probably mm. medium-sized yeah. indies as well, they're making streaming work so so how do they get more success from streaming than maybe the majority of diy artists do well first off there's a focus on new releases streaming services like spotify emphasize the new it isn't so much about back catalog it's all about driving streams to regular releases of new music and that maybe doesn't necessarily happen as much for sort of DIY artists. Um, th there has been a slight change of that in terms of the pandemic because people are in, in times of trouble, they're going back to, shall we say, more comforting Familiar. back catalogs. Yeah. But, but that, that, that's just sort of a, a blip, as it were. So, um, so the larger uh, record companies, they have an effective marketing machine to bring their artists to the attention of many members of the public who then go on to stream their music. And obviously there's a significant volume in this. And it's always true to say that the majority of people, they've never really bought music anyway. I think at the height, certainly in the UK, of, of when people actually bought CDs, the, the average person only ever bought three albums 
per year. And obviously that's the average. So some people bought more, some mm. people bought even less. And Unless what... you were stuck with Britannia Music Club and you had a lot that you probably didn't want. <laughs> Those were the days. Those were the days. But it, it, what they've been able to do is they've been able to monetize that casual fan um, because there is lots of fans. Mm. It, it's all about that volume generates the revenue, the majority of which they would never have seen anyway you know and the whole new you know the whole creation of streaming services was to was to generate uh, even a, a modest income on this the sort of person who would just sort of uh, use something like Napster or any other file sharing service yeah. to, to to acquire some music and you know people would never really receive you know any money from it anyway so but also the thing is it's the Spotify uh, and YouTube to some extent have Stop licking my leg. Uh, is, uh... Thank you, pardon, Greg. There's nothing to do with me. <laughs> it's the dog. It has, it's, it's one of the few things that's um, actually basically made piracy pointless. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, and I do find it bemusing that people moan about a, a platform that's, all, albeit giving them a small amount of money, but it's still giving them something. And more importantly, it's giving them exposure but they're moaning about that. It's like, well, otherwise, you know, if you really think every person that wants to connect with you is immediately going to put their hand in their pocket, I think they're misguided. Mm. I think well, let's, I was just going to say, let's discuss sort of how maybe DIY musicians approach their, uh, their releases. I would say that, I, I, especially in terms of things like sort of singles, they're maybe more infrequent than their larger mm counterparts they have um obviously a smaller fan base and i would probably say no coordinated strategy in order to continually increase their fan base and then they don't necessarily have the best of marketing plans in order to get that fan base to consume their music and get you know exposure on their releases i don't know whether you knew this greg but spotify does do a little bit of scanning of the blogosphere in terms of which particular artists and pieces of music are gaining traction. And consequently, that actually improves ever so slightly your algorithmic uh, chance of discovery right. on the platform. But again, I mean, it would be no different to, uh, I suppose, um, radio when the producers are trying to find new things, you know, ultimately, I guess... Everybody wants to be the person that discovers that artist, don't they? So yeah, I'm yeah, sure yeah. Spotify can't just, you'd think it a bit strange if they just sit back, fold their arms, put their feet on the desk and wait for, you'd think that they'd want to be proactive. So no, it's good to know that they are. So what I did was um, I had a look through this original person who tweeted. I scrolled back through their Twitter feed just to see, right, okay, so you know, you say you don't really make a lot of money from Spotify. Let's see in at least on one social channel just how much activity there is in terms of sending traffic over to Spotify. And there wasn't a, a, a great <laughs> deal. And, and the thing that most... What are the, the chances? What are the chances? I mean... For a, a lot of DIY artists and musicians, streaming isn't what they refer to as passive income. So you, you, you're aware what passive income is. You, yes. can, you can have something set up which you leave in the background and it just generates money without you having to, 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 to do anything. Hasn't Gary V talked about that? Yes, he, he, he says that, you know, unless you're really, really lucky, there, there isn't any such thing as that. And I would say for most DIY artists and musicians, just because you've got music on streaming services, it, it's not going to, we might have said this before, it's not going to sprout legs and uh, walk up into, into into people's sort of playlists. So, so you have to be the instigator of something you know you have to be directing your audience to uh, to the streaming services you have to find new ways to to recontextualize it in the form of maybe different sort of playlists and uh, you know it may well be that you have to spend a, a little bit more time engaging with um playlist curators and using something like submit hub to try and get uh, playlist curators and influencers to put your music to to their own sort of uh, audiences yeah. So with all that in mind, the question is, now we've sort of contextualised everything, should you take your music off streaming 
and put it solely exclusively for sale on Bandcamp. Well, the, the first thing I would say is that if you're the sort of artist who can't get anybody to stream your music on streaming services, how lucky or how much success do you think you're going to have in getting those same people not even to stream it on a platform which potentially might be free for them but to then go out and buy it that that's maybe the first thing to consider um, that's, that's, that's a valid that's a valid quite a valid point i think oh yeah i mean um i, I why would you create such a barrier for people to connect with your music it, it's I, I i see this quite frequently is that musicians seem to think because they love their what they do and it's their hobby and they, they you know that everyone else should love it as much as they do and i think that off the bat i think it's you're just being too optimistic that'd mm. be like me asking you to come and pay to watch me play tennis are you any good well i'm all right you'd go well no that's right but it's what I've always wanted to do, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's like, you know, at least if you kind of go, well, there's a barbecue, you might have a bit more of a chance to come along, a vegetarian one, obviously, for you. Thanks. Uh, and, um, but it's a case of like, why? I think you, you have to do both. But uh, as I've seen time and time again, nobody wants to pay for a, a product that is the same as on YouTube or uh, or any of the other streaming services, but they'll happily spend hundreds of dollars on a, you know a deluxe glorified box set with all the bells and whistles. So you know, but you know, um, Trent Reznor's proven in the past that he can make a few million dollars on an album that was effectively available in the public domain for free mm. because and, and he gave yeah, a reason to buy. That's it, you know. And and if you have a great relationship with your fan base and if you've spent time creating value around the you know the, the products that you make or sell and especially the, the tangible ones you know you, you can sort of still make money yep. so so i i think you know there is as long as you have you got the right marketing plan and the right um um activities in terms of creating all the necessary content and doing all the things that you need to do to build a relationship with your audience uh, create value around what you do i think i think you know th th there are two possible ways that are th the two most effective ways to utilize both platforms and I'm, I'm using obviously bandcamp as a as a specific example just because it, it, it occurred in this particular tweet i used but that could be any sort of online store or, or or D to C, as it's called, so something like Music Glue. They they you know they will they will yeah. build you an online shop where you can sell tickets and you can sell merch. You you'll have to do the 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 uh, fulfillment yourself. But I yeah. think the first instance is okay, right? So you have all your music online streaming for the casual fan. Um, it's it's there and it's up there for algorithmic discovery. So some people will stumble across it by accident. You've probably got a strong release strategy, so you should be releasing new music quite sort of regularly, and the algorithm uh, likes that as well. So you've got a, a, a background strategy in place, uh, place to continually grow your overall audience and get those people to listen. And you could be using a service like Submit Hub, which is submitting that music to include on uh, playlists and to be featured by you know, all sorts of influencers as that sort of thing and then in addition to that for your super fans so you've been you know creating that relationship with your audience you can use a store like Bandcamp and you push the people who are highly engaged and get them to buy so in other words the casual fans you money you know you get you've got enough of those to to get a little bit of money from people who never would have bought anything anyway because they're hashtag cheapskates and for the people that you've got a great relationship mm. with the people who really do value what you do then then you funnel them across so it that's you know again the best of both worlds but you've got to have a strategy yeah. in place in order to make the stuff that you're selling valuable and to have enough of a online casual audience that you can get a modest return do you on think your streaming do you think these same people bemoaning Spotify as a income generator? Do you think they think the same about YouTube? Uh, probably. Well, the thing is, 
if you were if, do, if you were I, making if you were making four or five thousand pounds a month as a DIY artist, you wouldn't be complaining about streaming. You'd be saying this is absolutely great. Yeah. So most you know, so most people who are complaining just haven't seen the you know, haven't got this they, have, they haven't seen the results in terms of the streams to generate the money but they don't necessarily look at themselves to go right well why isn't it haven't i you know why haven't i got the yeah. streams i mean didn't uh a while back didn't taylor swift uh kind of go i'm pulling all my music off spotify but it still remained on youtube which i thought was a bit odd mm. if she did if she hated streaming so much why does she keep it in some but remove it from others? Or maybe it was just a big marketing ploy. So anyway, that was that was incident one. But right, so if if you're one of these artists that's really well, really quite against streaming, strategy two could be uh, just release singles available for streaming. So your big hitters are there. It, there is at least some music. For people to consume on the streaming services and you know there's there's awareness and there's an element of discovery there but you've then got a strategy that obviously engages the audience and then go ah right for even more then come across to bandcamp or to music glue where, where i where i'm selling everything in its entirety so you're, you're obviously going to get less in terms of overall sort of streaming revenue and you also have to be satisfied with the fact that what you are technically doing is going against the grain of what everyone else is doing. And you're almost the equivalent of, of withholding from day one and doing that. Oh no, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to consume this. You, you know, you have to be very, very special and you have to put your hand in your pocket. Whereas, you know, there might be more of an overall, I don't know, a, a better success rate by being the sort of person who is seen to be giving everything away rather than trying to be miserly with it? Yeah. In the first accident, in the first instance, because th there is now generally an expectation that everything is free, is it not? I mean, that's yeah. not necessarily a good thing, but that that's just how. But the thing is, so the um, a free tier to um, being able to connect with the content. I think is mis is mis is seen as being placing no value on it, and I think they they, they look at streaming services potentially as a because people can listen to it for free. There's no value in it, which I think is wrong. Um, there, of course, there's value in it because the you know if people v like it, they will listen to it more, which shows that in itself has shown proven value. It's just if you go, you know, everyone loves to compare everything to like the 80s or 90s when people were buying music. But let's be honest, if this technology was available back then, they would have still been confronted with the same problem mm. in their eyes. You know, people only bought records back then because other than listening to the radio, that was your only way to be able to consume it. And as you said, you know, as you rightly pointed out earlier on, people mistook the 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 media to connect as people being real fans you know you bought cds back then because that was the only way you were going to listen to it unless you put on the radio and hoped they played the song that you liked so just because now that people if this technology sorry was available then i think people would still be moaning about it back then so yeah so i i think i think the best the, the best strategy is is going um, both barrels hmm. on sort of both platforms. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Uh, wrong with that. And I think if people had a better overall marketing strategy, then they'd probably see their streaming increase and their physical, tangible sales, or even you know, lossless download sales from something like Bandcamp. They would probably increase as well. So, so it's down to the overall strategy, not necessarily the the cons of individual sort of platforms it's more how each platform is utilized and how each one might potentially be talking to and generating money from an entirely different audience here endeth the lesson or the sermon greg i could be you know i could be wrong i could be talking about my behind that's the you know i am but one particular person and if if anybody completely disagrees with me and, and thinks that Put spotify is 
stick it in the comments below. Give me a, a you know a, a digital knee in the groin by all means. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just think as, as a tool, I mean, one thing that I've, um, with using an iPhone again um, and having, because I've got Apple TV here, it's really cool to be able to go on the BBC Sounds app, connect that to my Apple TV, which is then connected to my hi-fi and be able to listen to music. So again, I'm listening to more music, although in a kind of traditional radio kind of way. But I see that device as a tool to help me connect with music. And I'm not going out purposefully seeking music to buy. At the moment, it's a way of getting music into my ears and raising my attention to bands. So, you know, and I can do that. Okay, I'm still on a Spotify free one. So it doesn't work as well with an iPhone, but I can connect my MacBook to it and do things in exactly the same way. And it's a case of like, you're a fan of music, I'm a fan of music, we buy into music, but we also use Spotify to discover and revisit music. Um, I don't, I really can't see why people moan about it. Well, I, again, it's, it's just because of the, the levels of revenue that individual streams create. And there is, there's a lot, especially during the lockdown, there's, there's a lot of uh, chatter online at the moment as to making streaming fairer so that your individual streams and the money that you pay spotify it's it's divvied out according to you know it's not all necessarily going into a pot and then the majority of money going to think people like drake and billy eilish because they've generated the most streams but trying to get streaming to pay out that if for example i listened to 50% Queen and 50% one DIY artist. And I paid uh, £10 a month and £7 of that goes to the, the the labels or the artists themselves. Then £3.50 would go to Queen and £3.50 would go to this sort of DIY artist rather than everything going into a big pot and then going, right, well, Drake had 2% of the streams, so he gets 2% of all that money. So, that, you know, there are moves potentially to to try and at least open up the conversation around that. But I don't think that's ever going to gain traction because that would mean that the major labels would end up receiving less money and they're not going to allow that to happen, if anything. Well, if, they're, if they're, that, they're... It, their outgoings are considerably more because, as you said earlier on, you know, just an artist getting a lot of streams is a resp is a, a result of many different things. Marketing being one of them, and marketing, unfortunately, can cost big money. Yeah, exactly. And the so artists, I don't think themselves would want that because if you're suddenly, if the record label that you work for effectively are now going to say we're giving you less money to market your material, which basically means you won't have the same exposure that you had. I think the artists themselves would go, the ones that are already at that level are going to go, well, hang on. No, I, I don't, you know, it's, uh, I can't see um, people being that generous, so to speak. But the yeah, I don't, I don't, th I, I don't think, I think it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a non, it's a bit of a non-starter. It'd be nice, but as I say, I don't think the major labels with their major streaming catalogs which is what basically mm -hmm. attracts people to the larger um how big a deal services. was it when the spotify did that spotify finally got the beatles stuff uh oh yes yeah, I, I yeah. Think the, but it uh, was it was, it was a while, while in the process uh, in the in the making and when they finally you know spotify really made a big deal about that because they knew for, you know they've obviously got a, a band that everyone is familiar with so and it, it's it's interesting, but at the same time, infuriating. So in summary for today's show, Greg, uh, Bandcamp, Spotify, the, they're almost appealing to two separate platforms. Make sure you have a marketing strategy to address both of the fans that use those platforms. And if you do that, then you can be a win-win on both. Yeah. I mean, you, um, I know that most of the, well, from your audience, most people like to come and see you in the flesh, so to speak. Don't, don't, and... don't, don't remind me, Greg. It's, uh, <laughs> Sorry. It, it's bringing tears to my eyes. So that's not my intention. But in terms of at the same time, you know that the, the majority of your revenue, you know, this isn't going to work, is it? Uh, for you at the moment, you're 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 this crying. out, Greg. Yeah, so 
It's just, but your streaming revenue, you know, you still put your stuff on Spotify because it's a way for people to either relive a gig experience, so to speak, by listening back to the song that they liked, or it's a way for people to discover to then want to come and see you. I think there's going to possibly be a considerable surge of uh, probably more acoustic recordings on Spotify. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was I was listening to Five Live briefly yesterday and they had uh, James Skelly, is that his name, from The Coral? Oh, okay. And he was saying that, you know, he was he's basically been doing what everyone else has been doing in terms of getting an acoustic guitar and, you know, did a little littling uh, over the Instagrams. And he said, you know, that he was really enjoying it and in terms of him releasing sort of lo-fi acoustic sort of music, he, he's literally going to make it as lo-fi and as low-key as possible and almost, like, just just, just get it out there. You know, yeah. and, and, and this, and it, again, it's probably the same people who are streaming about, oh, people uh, not paying me, and uh, Spotify not paying me enough money. They're the ones doing live streams on Facebook for you know and getting paid zero pounds zero pence in 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 the process so you know, platforms platforms anyway anyway but uh, coming back to spotify i mean is it actually making money yet um i don't th- well the, the argument is that it's it's generated money through an ipo so in other words it's gone public so it's generated money from the people who owned the company and it's generating money from for the employees of the company and and the founders but actually achieving a profit i don't think it's actually i don't think it's even turned a profit yet but it is i think it is the biggest royalty payer imagine if you were to take away spotify i don't think you'd immediately generate the revenue that that platform is generating the old way yeah, the industry will collapse, and you know there has been talk as well in terms of what will be now a global economic downturn. How many people will stop paying their premium subscriptions and revert mm. to the free level, which means a subsequent drop in uh, revenue, and there'll be less advertisers on the platform, which may well result in a drop in revenue for uh, for the, in the uh, streaming ecosystem. But let's not get myself. But- but but the thing is though, if that was to happen, I mean ultimately it's in no one's interest, labels especially. So maybe that is the shove that the record labels need to renegotiate with Spotify. Because I mean a lot of the artists are moaning about what they're receiving, but they've ne- they're not the ones negotiating with Spotify. Their label are. So really yeah. their bugbear should be with their own label not with Spotify. And one of the reasons why certain artists bemoan the lack of money they receive from streaming is that the contracts that they Mm. signed and the deal Mm. that they're on means that the modest amount of money that they might get from streaming, they only see a small percentage of that. I mean, in some respects, being a DIY artist is actually better on the streaming services because that there's 70% of, of money that goes to the publisher and ergo the the artist yeah 100 of that will will go to will go to you whereas i hate to think what sort of percentage of the money that you get from streaming will go to uh, you know you the artist maybe 20 percent if you're lucky but i'd probably say 15 i mean a lot of the big artists it'd be interesting to know whether they actually because when they signed their contracts this uh format wasn't in place yeah and I wonder if they're still paying ten percent uh, uh, breakages on streaming. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. Probably. Probably. So, but yeah. So, well, that is today's uh, thirty is. minute music marketing is. deep dive. I'm not too sure uh, in terms of the Zoom um, whether we've been on uh, dual screen view or single screen view. No doubt you'll you'll find out when you when you when you come to edit this very shortly. I just thought I'd I, I put us on. Uh, the communal view. Yeah, no, I'm it's, just it's, at the top. I, I, to be honest, I didn't actually think of that. I should have no, put it on no, speaker. No, neither did I. That, that's because I, I put you in control of uh, this particular uh, to meeting, be honest, so you could m- tweak. Maybe uh, we'll find out. So, we will. We will. So, and if, will you, s- if you're listening on the podcast, you'll have absolutely no idea what we're talking no. about. <laughs> and um, we will see you 
soon. They're, they're a little soon. bit more sporadic at the moment. Yes, oh. but that, that's because you know there's there's less uh, music things to occupy. I think both our uh, both our minds, but that, no doubt, will topics will 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 walk into our lives. One like... thing though, you, there were kind of I heard on a, a thing on Radio Four in terms of like you know there's it's almost like with the lockdown you can't actually there are some people that have actually enjoyed it and i'll be honest and say that the 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 time i've had has given me the opportunity to learn a lot more things well that's true that that's true it, you know, it has given me uh, opportunity to actually start my uh, my my band accounts which i'm uh, which i shall be <laughs> uh, which i'll be going back to the moment i finish speaking to you greg so so uh, i yeah i'm going into excel hell but you know it does mean i'll, I'll still be able to uh, get a little bit of money in in a couple of weeks but you've had the chance to revisit some of your old <laughs> yes band oh actually that that's that's true yes and resurrecting had... one of my old old bands You've, you know, we've all had to implement, you know, we've all using things like video conferencing stuff. So that's I nev good. I, yeah, I never thought I'd be, you know, subsequently uh, talking to uh, people on a on a daily basis via uh, video conferencing software. But it, it's surprising how quickly systems and practices have yeah. uh, have changed. And I think they're going to be with us for um for a long period of time and you know i think this system of, of communication in terms of video conferencing i think even once everything gets back to you know 90 percent, 95 percent normality I, I, I think we are going to be doing this more on a daily basis mm -hmm. so, so I'm, but... I'm, I'm probably never coming around to yours ever again Greg. <laughs> <laughs> thanks i liked it when you bought the biscuits I know, uh so... I know. those were the days so yeah, hopefully uh, things will start to get back to normal. So, so thanks very much for listening slash watching this particular episode. Make sure you, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, ring the bell, thumbs up, like, subscribe, or whatever it is. Subscribe. Button. Tell your friends about the podcast. Like I say, if if you disagree with what we've been saying, feel free to uh, stick your comments in whatever box is uh, near to uh, this particular piece of content. And until next time, stay safe, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.